World War I, the Great War, the war to end all wars. The U.S. joined World War I April 17, 1917. Over a hundred years later, we're asking, if this was the war to end all wars, why did it have a number? April 6, 1917, two days after the U.S. Senate voted 82 to 6 to declare war against Germany, the House of Representatives endorsed the declaration by 373 to 50 vote, and America formally enters World War I. The war started June 28, 1914, by a boring movie. The Duke of Austria had a son, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who was watching a boring movie in Sarajevo, Bosnia. The Archduke said to his wife, Sophie, let us go for a car ride. This movie stinks. At the same time, a small group of terrorists watching the same boring movie left the theater and came upon the Archduke and Sophie. Gravelio Principe, with weapons supplied by the Black Hand Group, shot the Archduke and Sophie. Both died within an hour. This terrorist act set off a chain of events resulting in World War I. We don't want to get another boring video. This is 1917. not a boring video. Come along with a Rhodes Scholar group learning about World War I 100 years later. Our journey begins in New York City. From arrival at JFK to leaving on the Queen Mary II, we were surrounded by heavy traffic. It appears the New York Police Department is out to catch small crooks. So sad was the remembrance of the 9-11-2001 attack on the World Trade Center. Sailing away from New York City on the Queen Mary II provides an ideal venue for daily lectures about World War I. Colonel Andrew Duff, retired British infantry officer, provided three hours per day for seven days of excellent details about battles and political background for each of the four years of war fought in northwestern France. The remainder of each day was spent exploring the many entertainments of the Queen Mary II. Of course, eating was an important part of each day. Chocolate day was especially good. Three evenings were designated as formal dress nights. One included a formal mask ball. Even informal nights were dress-up times. Ocean Liner Queen Mary II showed much artwork similar to the original Queen Mary docked in Long Beach, California. Considerable entertainment was obtained by playing with the glass elevator. Yes, Captain, we will let the other kids have an opportunity to ride also. We kept a daily log of our time on watch for each day. Our Atlantic crossing is finished. We hurry on to London from the busy port of Southampton. Red double-decker buses and black taxis are familiar sights 
on London streets. Mike, a professional licensed tour guide, shows us major London sights. Horse mounted guards draw a crowd. Westminster Abbey is a must see in a walk around London. Tim Saunders and son Jamie entertained and educated us about the use of World War I equipment used by soldiers of that war. A visit to the Imperial War Museum furthered knowledge of war fighting equipment and the horrors of war. Sergeant Dufresne is having trouble finding the battle. Sergeant Dufresne finds a suitable vehicle. Now where is that battle again? Barbara goes off on her own to sample local food. Leaving London behind, the Eurostar TGV train takes us under the English Channel by way of the Channel to the battlefields of France. Our hotel room for the night in Lille sports unusual artwork. Barbara attracts a French gentleman who takes us on a whirlwind tour of the squares of Lille. We understand not a word, but he is very enthusiastic and proud of his village. Transportation around France is a nice new 35 passenger coach driven by Mui who starts the coach using a breathalyzer. Outside the McDonald's an Uber delivery bike stands at the ready. Barbara is allergic to pineapple but this seems extreme even to Sergeant Dufresne. A very good lunch was enjoyed at the Ocean Villa Tea Room. Farm animals added to the ambience of a very good lunch. War fighting trenches ran right through this village. War memorials have been built here to show respect. Additionally, admiration and gratitude is shown by laying of wreaths. Many cemeteries are well maintained over the French countryside. Muse Argonne battle map is explained in detail by Colonel Duff. An extremely large wine barrel was pulled by 24 oxen to Paris to advertise Mercier Champagne in 1889. A visit to the wine cellar is followed by a visit to the ever popular tasting room. Grapes are nearing the September picking season. Rod Drysdale Andrew Death. Thank you for your attention to detail and consideration for all.